Or hey, um, let me see. Uh, I am ready. Okay, cool. We're going to start doing dial soon. Uh, right. Uh, welcome, everybody, to a uh, top four match for Corona Cup 2. Uh, I'm your host today, Mark, and uh, let's all look forward to a pretty good game. So uh, the players have already gone ahead and put down their asteroids and their rocks and, and deployed. Uh, and from both of these players, we're seeing their, their standard. Um, Charles setting up his, uh, his ships together, his little mini swarm together with Poe in a flanking position. And Brandon setting up Leighton and Paylob in the center, ready to react either direction, um, with Asajj a little farther away than we're used to seeing, but still very much within his kind of standard approach to this. Lead with Leighton, lead with Paylob, bring in Asajj later as the more vulnerable ship. Uh, it's a little interesting to see where Charles's little mini swarm is he's going to be a little restricted in how he approaches, but he still has plenty of places to go. And if he goes straight a little bit, he'll have a lot of room there and kind of the middle left side of the board to maneuver in. Now we've seen these players a little bit. Um, we've seen these players a lot here on stream, um, winning pretty consistently through the tournament. Um, Brandon winning uh, through his way through to top four uh, in our last stream, uh, where we saw Paylob almost get destroyed. But it, it should be it should be mentioned that Paylob is still an extremely difficult target to kill, and uh, will be very effective against Charles's ships here because uh, the these resistance ships do like their focus tokens. And by and large, uh, for at least two of Charles's four ships, taking target locks doesn't really help them. Jess gets rerolls anyway, and so does Rose. Those ships really want to focus, so it'll be interesting to see how Charles handles the ever-present risk of having Paylob steal focus tokens out from under him. He may decide not to take focus, or he may decide to just take focus with everybody and trust that his offense is enough. Let me check the clock here and see if they've started. All right, the clock has not started yet. We'll start it just as soon as they begin moving. Um, as an aside, I'm trying a, a little bit of a new display type here. Um, top down. Uh, as much as possible with uh, a little bit of a different hull and shield indicator going on. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think of that in the chat if you prefer the more angled look. Uh, I thought this would be particularly helpful to see how uh, the angles are actually working rather than the, uh, the kind of forced perspective. It looks like they're getting moving, so let me confirm here. All right, and the clock has started, so we're going to get moving. Uh, Brandon going ahead and revealing his dial with Paylob. Too hard turn away. And that's a little interesting, um, but it makes sense that Brandon not really willing right now to just drive straight into this very damaging set series of ships that Charles has. Uh, instead preferring to start adopting a more circling formation with Paylob. We saw earlier in this tournament uh, when uh, we, Charles took his resistance up against Brian's rebel list that, and this is just an insanely powerful list if you just drive right up to it. Um, completely capable of blowing through Leighton maybe even Paylob, uh, maybe, and taking Asajj down below half in one round if 
Charles gets to do what he wants to do. But the, the weakness of this resistance list uh, is that it's just, it's not the most maneuverable thing in the world. It really, Rose is very restricted in her movement. Um, she needs that support. And the T-70s, Jessica and, and the Red Squadron really like to be together. So it's really kind of a two-ship list. Um, not, the, the players who lose the most badly to Charles using the, applying this list are the players who don't force Charles to really push the maneuverability of his ships to the max. I think... You know, all, all of the games that we've seen with Charles able to just kind of one straight, one bank to victory, if you as his opponent let him do that and still get shots, you're going to lose the game. Uh, so in a way, it's it's kind of on Brandon here to pick his fights in a more advantageous position, force Charles to really fly around and jockey for a shot. And we already see Brandon doing that, choosing not to fly right at Charles, choosing instead to start circling around this asteroid field and really uh, make it a little bit more difficult for Charles to get those concentrated shots out of the mini swarm that he really needs. And uh, Asaj, yeah, just doing a, a slow bank, coming out of that cornered position. And like Paylob, like Layton, starting to set up for just a, a circle around that asteroid field, making uh, Charles come through the field to get to him. And that's probably the right call by Brandon. Uh, though that uh, aggressive cluster of rocks uh, ahead and to the right of Asajj could be problematic, depending on how fast the resistance comes through it. But shouldn't be too much of an issue considering Asajj can shoot out the right just like Caleb. And those rocks are going to be in the T-70s way just as much as they're going to be in Asajj's. I'm interested though in seeing what Poe is doing here. Um, Poe, without maneuver, uh, is going to have a little bit of a difficult time Activating that reliably in this game, um, both Asajj and Paylob sporting essentially 180 degree arcs for most of the game. But it will help him push damage on Leighton, and Poe is just always a very solidly reliable damage dealer. Uh, he can be a little squishy. And he is going to have trouble dealing a lot of damage if that's the only shot. Asajj and Paylob both very capable of kind of shrugging off that damage from a lone ship. So I doubt we're going to see Poe flank too, heaven, too heavily or too aggressively around. He'll probably try to do what he's tried to do in the past, which is bring the mini swarm through uh, the center and have that be the primary focus, and then bring Poe in kind of at the last moment to take a supporting range three, range two shot from the side, and then really start to mix it up. Though often the, the purpose for that was to get that outmaneuver on that Poe shot. Um, and again, that might not be the most viable approach here, but we'll see. Um, some looks like Charles is taking a while on his dials here. Uh, I don't think he really expected for all of a sudden this to be the board state where Brandon is flying away from him with all of his ships and Charles is, is all of a sudden doing a chase instead of where he may have been predicting the fight would happen, which is the big empty space in the center there with the rocks. Instead, now he's being forced to kind of chart a course through these asteroids to get to Brandon, and I don't think that's where he wanted to be. Uh, Paylob continuing uh, what he started last turn. He's got his two focus tokens now, so he's fully stocked. Uh, and 
in a great position to just start circling around. Um, maybe hard turn in on the rocks if he sees a good opportunity. Uh, and Leighton just following. Um, you know, we, we've seen from Brandon uh, throughout this tournament, Leighton is very much just his extra ship. Uh, he's very willing to put him in a little bit of a precarious position. But he likes to be a little bit careful with Leighton so that Leighton can survive to get a flanking position. And I think Brandon is perfectly happy if that flanking position doesn't really happen until the turn or two or three after the first shots have been fired. You know, nobody really wants to waste shots on Leighton. He's only 34 points. If your first shots don't go well, it makes the next shots harder. And uh, at the same time, though, nobody wants that auto blaster sitting behind them. Yeah, uh, that yeah. These are. This is going to be. I'm hoping this is going to be a very very good game. These guys are clearly quality players. Um, and uh, it, it really is though going to be. A, a very jockeying for position kind of game. The the player that sets up the the right first engagement is probably going to walk away with a uh, a large advantage moving forward. Let's talk to about the other reason that Brandon would very much prefer the initial fight happen kind of in this middle section of the board as opposed to the left side. And that's because Asajj, especially with heightened perception, is very capable of putting any one of these ships, even including Rose, uh, on a rock before they get to shoot. Even Poe at PS6 is susceptible to being plopped onto a rock with the heightened perception PS7 shot. And for the rest of them, Asajj won't even have to spend the force to do it. So Brandon would very much rather force Charles to approach constantly next to these rocks because that means that he may be able to prevent a shot coming back at him. And that here, that could be the difference between victory and defeat, especially if it works out like this. Uh, Brandon approaches, Palob steals a focus, Asajj puts one of the ships that still has their focus onto a rock, and all of a sudden, you've essentially denied two very good shots. And of course, if, if you're Charles, you want to prevent that by, by any means necessary. Uh, and Poe, uh, just joining up with the rest of the formation. Let's, let's take a minute to talk about how beautiful that was. Uh, looking at it right now, you would never know that Poe started off so far away from the rest of the field. Um, here he is just... Barrel rolling and boosting to be in perfect line formation with uh, with Rose, and I think that makes sense right now. We we might still see Poe jet off very fast uh, to the bottom left side of the board, uh, boosting and barrel rolling around to try to get a flanking position on on Leighton and Paylob, uh, but we could also see uh, Poe just reacting to what I was talking about last turn with you know, not really necessarily able to get a good outmaneuver shot against most of these ships. And instead, just choosing to join in with the block and try to increase the amount of shots he can have all in one go. Yeah, and that's the other thing that, yeah, good point. He can, he can you know, he wants to have Paylob close to, to obstacles to... Um, to do debris gambit. Uh, it's not like a huge deal necessarily if he doesn't get to do debris gambit because he can take a, he could still take another focus action and use focus uh, tokens to re-roll green dice if he rolls any blanks. But uh, yeah, an evade token is absolutely something Brandon is looking for here. Ideally, he would he would walks into uh, combat with Paylob having three focus tokens and an evade. The two focus tokens from previous turns, an evade from Debris Gambit, and then a focus token he manages to lift off of one of Charles's ships. And that is a very difficult pay lob to push damage through. And, you know, we've just seen that time and again. Um, the only player that's managed to put any damage through on pay lob that I'm aware of is, is uh, 
Brandon's uh, eliminations opponent last week. Uh, and even then, Kevin didn't manage to, to finish Paylob off. So, yeah, very, very difficult ship to kill. Yeah, and there's that Debris Gambit Evade coming through. Um, and Leighton pulling a K-turn. So what I was going to talk about a little bit with Poe here is um, one of the things that you, you, in a way, kind of give up when you just put all of your ships in a formation together. The advantage is... The advantage is that you get to uh, help ensure that you can concentrate fire. You know, if you've got a shot with one of your ships, you've got a shot with most of your ships, and that can be a big deal. Uh, it also kind of helps cover your, your, your flank there. You can always kind of slow a ship down to help people coming in and trying to get at the sides. It's a, it's a little easier to prevent aces from just coming in around and getting a hard flank and, and starting to delete ships. The disadvantage right now is that Charles isn't really doing anything to stop Brandon from playing the game that Brandon wants to play. Um, Charles is doing these one banks, two banks, two straights, you know, uh, and just moving in a very predictable fashion. Um, and that serves you very well against players who are willing to uh, come in at you and just come straight at you into the killing fields. But uh, Brandon is not that player. Brandon will play his own game and his, you know find his own preference on how to approach. And you kind of need to force him to come engage you before he gets to set up exactly the way he wants. Um, anyway, uh, so it's just, it's, I think it might be a matter of Poe would have been, I think the best possible ship for Charles to kind of shoot around and force Brandon to kind of start having to react to a possible combat rather than just continuing to get into this net formation where he wants to be. But I think by the time Charles manages to react to Brandon's change in, in formation and, and actually get into a place where he can start threatening Brandon's ships, Brandon's probably going to be exactly where he wants to be. And that's it's kind of got to be a little uh, stressful for Charles thinking about how he's not quite sure where Brandon's ships are going to be coming at him from. And he's not quite sure where he needs to be putting his ships to react to it. Uh, and Poe looked like Poe was going to be trying to come around and split off a little bit, but unfortunately, uh, just bumped a little bit just there on Rose, and, and that is, uh, going to keep Poe from starting to come around and flank like Charles probably wanted for at least another turn. That said... You know, we're, I, we've been talking a lot about this, but um, let's talk about Brandon's position here for a moment. Paylob in a pretty good spot. Uh, he's by his rocks. There's pretty much nowhere he wants to go for the next couple turns that won't get him the the uh, debris evade. And Leighton also in a pretty decent spot. Uh, the X wings are probably going to have to. They're going to have to choose between Asajj and Paylob here at this point. And any direction that they go in at Paylob and Asajj, they are not going to be going in on Leighton, and that'll give Leighton a lot of free room to operate. Uh, yeah, uh, commenter saying uh, he won't, uh, Charles won't have time to wear down Asajj uh, if the clock keeps sticking down. That's a good point. Although I will say, um, if Charles manages even one good round of shooting against Asajj, Asajj could be half dead right there. So, 
Uh, this, you know, this is a very bursty list that the resistance player is flying here, and it is completely capable of taking these ships down uh, all, quite a bit in just one go. Um, this is not Charles is not flying a list that you take pot shots and, and wear wear ships down over time. It's really a, a list where you try to get your decisive engagements and really just destroy the opponent faster than they have the chance to react. But yeah, uh, so Palob in a good position, I think. Leighton in a pretty good position. Asajj is in an interesting position. Uh, those rocks are right in her way. And both Palob and Asajj are capable of circling around and taking shots out of the sides, but they don't want to do that. Uh, those are two dice attacks instead of three. And with two agility on these T-70s and a lot of health on them, uh, Brandon really needs to be firing his three dice attacks if he wants to push any reliable damage. This is a lot of health in Charles's list that Brandon needs to chew through. Um, Charles looking to fly straight. Um, Leighton must be has got to be sweating just a little bit here. Uh, maybe thinking that the X wings were going to bank in, but instead are just coming straight at him. But this makes sense because what Charles is saying is, okay, if I three straight here, I'm probably not going to get shot by Asajj this turn. Yeah, there's the, the hard turn around, the bank around so that Asajj can set up for the two hard turn next turn. Um, and Charles is saying, okay, but if I'm here, I can react to whatever. But the problem is that... Now that Asajj has, has come so far around that she can set up for that hard turn through and between the rocks, Charles is going to have a hard time reacting to that and coming around to threaten Asajj. The advantage is that uh, Asajj is also going to have a hard time putting any of the T-70s on a rock. Uh, Charles reaching that area of the board where there are just not that many obstacles to go around. So we'll see what happens. Certainly, again, Leighton has got to be sweating just a little bit. I think Brandon really expected, and I really expected, uh, Charles to kind of uh, half his move there, set up his ability to come in at Asajj or come in at Paylob next turn. But instead, he, he committed to this part of the board where he's just not going to be able to come in at Asajj. And while that's good news for Asajj, it's not great news for Leighton. Uh, Palob, though, in a very interesting position. You have to wonder if Brandon's going to come in real hard with Palob here and uh, try to steal a token. Get... if. It's it's difficult to say. You wonder if Palob feels comfortable evading the mini swarms shots. If Palob feels comfortable doing that, he could come in hard here, steal a focus token, and try to weather those three shots. If he manages to do that, Asajj is coming in, Palob can get that run away shot out the back that Brandon really wants and make it even more difficult for Charles to take Palob down or stop him from stealing tokens. And then Leighton can complete the box in. You know, he's he'll have Palob coming from one direction, Asajj from another, and Leighton from another, and it'll be really difficult to kind of choose where you want those T seventies to go. So this is a very, very important turn for Charles. Brandon has kind of completed his net. And Charles needs to pick a ship this turn and see about deleting it. After this turn, it's probably going to start getting much, much harder to do that reliably. Uh, 
Poe a little bit out. I I wonder if it was a good idea after that bump to continue trying this idea of Poe going around the rock. Um, which is not to say that Poe doesn't have shot opportunities. He he's in a good, pretty good position to come in on Leighton, but you really wanted Poe to come be coming in on Paylob or Asajj this turn to to match your shots up with the rest of the group. And I don't know that he's going to be able to get a good shot on Paylob. Now the advantage here uh, for Charles is that he could move fast. He could do a three bank with the, most of the mini swarm and he will, by doing that, he will be forcing Asajj to not take a very good shot. If Asajj takes a shot at all. Um, so in a way, both of these players right now are looking to engage with all but one ship this turn. Asajj might get a shot, but if she does, it probably won't be a very good one. Poe might get a shot, but if he does, it probably won't be a very good one. Uh, but Leighton in a good position for a shot, Paylob in a good position for a shot, and the Mini Swarm in a good position for shots. So we'll see who comes up ahead on this. Uh, Paylob just going to kind of lazily come around, get that evade for focus, focus, evade. And... I think that's the best position for Paylob to be in. Uh, and Leighton doing the one bank, making sure that Poe can't get the out maneuver against her. Uh, that's the best position for Paylob to be in, I think, because if Charles goes fast, like he's doing, fast enough anyway, uh, Paylob can steal those focus tokens. Um, and if Charles goes slow, Paylob may not be able to steal a focus token, but Paylob might be able to prevent getting shot from all three ships at once. Uh, but it looks like Charles choosing kind of a middle of the road here uh, will be in range to uh, have a focus token stolen probably, depending on how fast the red squadron moves. Um, and, but Charles already setting up to assume that those focus tokens are going to be stolen because that is a target lock that Jess is taking on Leighton. And uh, Jess doesn't usually want or need target locks. Uh, and same again here. Uh, so Charles going all in on those target locks. Um, I want to confirm, Paylob's ability with stealing those focus tokens, I believe, is range 0 to 2 only. And I will be confirming that as we continue this. Yeah, it is range 0 to 2. I, I wonder if that looks like, just looks like more range 3 to me. Uh, and if so, that's a that's a missed opportunity there for, for Charles to take that focus token and optimize his firepower. Um, instead, he, he's choosing to, to only take target locks just to make 100% damn sure. Um, and I do think that is that is going to be reducing what he can do here uh, just a little bit. Rose, though, very confident that she's at range three, if she's in range of Paylob at all, and taking that focus. Uh, Charles has to hope at this point that he really did get all of his ships into range three of Paylob. Um, otherwise, right now, he's looking to split his fire between Leighton and Paylob and... Uh, that's not necessarily where he wants to be because Brandon's net is in place now. Uh, Asajj has a shot. Uh, Asajj, Leighton, and Paylob can all shoot the same ships. And that's what, uh, that's what Brandon wanted. That's what Brandon got. And Asajj is in an excellent position to come in hard next turn and really start making the damage happen. Um, Paylob, uh, checking range. I didn't see... Did, uh, chat, did you see if uh, that was range 2 or 3 to those T-70s? I mean, we'll see again later once they start shooting. Um, Poe taking a range 3 shot at Leighton. Um, this is just, you know, a standard, bog standard shot. Uh, Poe 
does look like uh, Poe did a double action and focused. Um, but And here's the problem. Uh, you don't shoot well. He didn't have a chance to take a target lock on that. So uh, you, give, you, you don't shoot well. You risk a pot shot. Now Leighton has a focus evade. Um, that uh, always makes Leighton more difficult to deal with. That said, we did see uh, that Rose is at range three of Palob. So Charles now has to decide what he's going to do with these ships. Asajj taking a range three at Red Squadron. That's probably the best call. We, we've all learned that shooting Rose is just, uh, <laughs> is just a terrible idea. Uh, hit, focus, focus. And if I'm Asajj, I'm spending two force right there. And uh, Brandon just going ahead and doing that. And uh, that's going to be one damage getting through onto that uh, Red Squad veteran. And that's not a bad place to start. But we'll see. Oh, and he's going to tractor him. And that's... That is significant. That's Brandon declaring that this is the ship he's going to be shooting for the rest of the... I just didn't see Asajj move the, the uh, arc forward, but that was, that was a good call by Brandon. And that is a tractored Red Squad vet. And it's interesting that he decided to move the veteran to the right. Um, that is going to... Well, I think, looking at that, it looks like the squad vet would have been at range 2 of Paylob and would have had his focus stolen, but Jess wouldn't have been. So that is a little bit of a mistake there for uh, Brandon or for Charles to not take that focus on Jess. Um, we've got a shot from Paylob coming in at the Red Squad vet. Paylob not spending any tokens. He uh, knows he wants to save all of those for defense. But he gets two hits anyway, and he's happy with that, taking another shield off of that Red Squad veteran. Uh, the only issue is by by moving that Red Squad veteran, it looks like you've you've made it a little harder for him to shoot Paylob effectively, which I think Brandon will take any day of the week right now. Maybe pulled the red out of Rose's arc. He might have. Um, I really think he just wanted to get that get that red to range three of Paylob. I think that was his main goal there. The disadvantage is by doing that, you uh, ensure that Leighton can't shoot red and, and just keep concentrating your fire and piling on. So Leighton's just going to take a pot shot uh, probably at Poe here, it looks like. Uh, the only one without re-rolls to his name. Uh, and that's that's the right call. Poe already spent his focus. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Poe still had a focus, so that's going to be three evades and um, <laughs> Leighton just grabbing another evade for the hell of it. Um, I don't. I don't think there's much chance that Leighton's going to be shot here. Uh, so here's the main. Here's the main game here. Uh, we've got three shots at Paylob. All three are range three, and only one of them is double modded. Oh, uh, here's the other thing. Actually, uh, it'll hard, be harder. But also, and and to your point, uh, commentator, um, Jess. That probably, ooh, that's a pretty good start for Brandon there. Um, Jess also, that means that Jess has one fewer ship at range one. And Jess's target lock was taken on Leighton, not on Paylob. So that's Jess rolling with just one reroll and no focus, which is a, a significantly reduced amount of damage output in, in all probability. Uh, so... Uh, Paylob taking no damage from that attack, and we're going to take a look at Rose now. It's Charles taking just a moment to contemplate whether he should keep shooting uh, Paylob and deciding that yes, he should. Uh, Brandon rolling up. Uh, hit crit, but that's just that's enough pain on the board. Brandon can probably just go ahead and spend that evade. Yeah, and he'll be completely fine right there. Not, uh, we we need to remember, or at least, uh, <laughs> oh, okay. 
let, let's talk about this too. And and so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say that 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 move was actually very good. The other thing it did, <laughs> the other thing moving that Red Squad vet did, uh, oh, that's not the best roll there for Jess, uh, was it moved Red Squad vet to the point where he could not use crack shot on Paylob. Both Red Squad vet and Rose have crack shot, and those are uh, those are pretty risky if you're Brandon because uh, it just means it's it's that much harder for you to to manage to evade that attack. And there's Paylob just effortlessly tanking three shots from uh, Charles's mini swarm and getting out Scott, not just Scott free, but with his two focus tokens still intact. Um, and that's got to be devastating for Charles to see because he re this was the turn he really needed to to start making something happen. But instead, uh, we got exactly what I was talking about about at the beginning of the game. Uh, Brandon got his full ability to deny mods, move ships around, and uh, deny Charles's ability to concentrate all of his fire on the key ship. Um, that said, uh, it's not like this. It's not like this game is over. It's just that that was a very good opportunity for Charles, and it, and it didn't happen. This turn is 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 very important. It's going to be a little bit more difficult now. Uh, Asajj is in the game and uh, Leighton is looking to be in an excellent flanking position uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see Leighton just K-turn behind Jess there and look for uh, uh, we, uh, we, we have an accidental dial deletion here uh, on Brandon's part so we're going to uh, be pausing the timer for just a moment And we'll keep an eye for when that comes up. So the what Charles wanted here was really making something happen with this first round of, of just blistering fire. And he didn't get it. Um, Brandon's still full health on all of his ships. And uh, Paylob still fully tokened. But Charles didn't really lose a lot in the process. He only lost two shields on the Red Squad Expert, which let me go ahead and update that. So that's not bad. Uh, all of his firepower is still intact. And Asajj aside, Brandon's list doesn't really give him a lot of ability to PS kill. Uh... And with that Red Squad veteran still having four health, it's not impossible that Brandon can one-shot it from here, but it, it's pretty unlikely. And Paylob is in a little bit of a spot. There are exactly four very angry resistance ships flying straight at him. <laughs> And there's not a lot of avenues for escape. If I remember correctly, Brandon has initiative here, which means Paylob's going to be moving first. Both of these players right now have to be thinking about, is Paylob going to one straight, or is Paylob going to go fast? Paylob does have a boost. Uh, it is red. But Paylob could move nice and quick here, try to get right into the center of this formation and, and disrupt it. Maybe get a bump, maybe stop a shot or two from coming in. But if Paylob boosts, that's a Paylob that isn't focusing or rotating its arc. Ideally, Brandon focuses and rotates his arc this turn to the place where he thinks that the most ships are going to be so he can continue doing that disruption and maybe steal him a, a token. The Hawks are slow, but in 2.0, Hawks do have a four straight. Uh, they also have a white three bank. So it is t completely possible for Paylob to really just get up in Charles's grill here and, and 
be disruptive. And if Charles thinks that's, what, that's what's going to happen, he could consider K-turning and Talon rolling this turn. Uh, the Red Squad vet, now that he's been moved, has a pretty decent avenue. Oh, they started the clock again. Let me adjust. Uh, now that the Red Squad veteran has been moved, he has actually a pretty decent uh, avenue to Talon roll up into the right and put himself in a, in a pretty decent position to flank Asajj. Uh, Rose, capable of K-turning. Jess has no problem with K-turning or Talon rolling. Uh, she's not going to hit obstacles either way. And uh, Poe in a pretty decent position to just kind of like lazily one bank or two bank and... Uh, try to avoid getting bumped by Leighton and get into a pretty decent position to start taking double modded shots in on Paylob. So really the, the question everybody's asking right now is what is Paylob doing? If Paylob's going fast, Charles wants to K-turn. If Paylob's going slow, Charles wants to one straight. And it is going to be a lot of importance on correctly predicting what Paylob's doing here. Leighton, in a way, very predictable. Uh, there, there's kind of two two good things Paylob can do here. Um, you could one hard turn and kind of start, maybe put yourself in a position to bump Jess or uh, put yourself in a position to take flanking shots on the, uh, on the T-70s. But if you do that, you open up your flank to Poe, double mod out maneuver, maybe range one, and that... That actually could just be a, de a dead latent right off the bat. So it's unlikely, I think, that Brandon would choose to do that. I think he would rather, if he thinks he can fit this K turn behind Jess, and I don't quite remember off the top of my head what the K turns are for this ship. It, the Interceptor, it's got a 5K, and that's going to fit behind Jess. So I, I would expect to see a 5K out of Leighton. There's no real reason not to. Uh, you probably not going to get shot here uh if you do shoot Leighton if, if Charles is shooting Leighton I think Charles is already I think Brandon's already way ahead and I think he's willing to risk that um and you might bump Poe you might get a flanking shot on Poe uh so that that's a pretty good place for for Leighton to be uh Asajj uh has kind of two good options Asajj can bank around to the right probably get most of Charles's list in arc and evade the rocks uh, may even be able to put a T-70 on a rock, depending on where they move. Or uh, Brandon can kind of uh, probably, I think, a four straight makes it. But Asajj is moving after all of these ships. So there, there should be no reason for Asajj not to feel completely comfortable being a little bit aggressive in the movement and setting herself up for a very nice range one double modded shot in on one of these ships. And, and just look to probably take that red squad off the board here after one round of shooting. If not, you know, the dream here for Brandon, of course, is PS killing that, that red squad vet. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if you do a bank with Asajj, you're setting yourself up for the, the biggest possibility of that happening. There's that 5K out of Leighton. And, and again, there's, there was no reason to do anything else. Uh, that there, Sometimes in X-Wing, there are just the best possible moves to do, and, and that was one of them. Um, Paylob coming in not as fast as he could have, doing a three straight instead of a four. Uh, but setting himself up in a decent position to block Rose if Rose tries to K. I don't think Rose has a fast enough K turn to, to make it past. Um, but he's not in a position where he can debris gambit, so he needs to focus. Uh, oh, he's just going to take the red evade that he gets from debris gambit. Um, that's, that's interesting. I, have, I haven't seen Brandon do that before. Um, I, I did very much expect him to, to focus and then push to uh, move his arc somewhere else, but he's chosen not to do that. There's that talent roll I was talking about from Red Squad Veteran. Um, 
you know the you may as well take the advantage of of Brandon moving you around to roll into a nice flanking position. Although the problem with doing that is uh, if Asajj has correctly predicted your move there, uh, she is completely capable of top popping you onto that rock before you even get a chance to shoot, and you don't have any defensive mods to stop doing, her from doing that. Uh, Rose predicting Paylob here moving in. And uh, doing Charles's favorite little trick with that uh, with Rose and choosing to jam instead of taking an action. Um, but Jess is going to bump, and uh, that is very unfortunate for Charles. There, just moving too quickly. Uh, if Jess had one banked, this would be a very very sad Paylob. Um, but instead, Paylob getting that that bump he wanted. Uh, Asajj moving in uh, with that two bank. And here's a question that Brandon's got to be thinking of. I think that target lock on Red Squad Veteran is still Asajj's. So if you're Asajj, do you move your arc to the right and take a range one shot on that Red Squad Veteran, knowing that you can pop him onto a rock? I think... And that, that's a question, too. Where Asajj is, you can't move the Red Squad Vet forward. But I, want, I think if you barrel roll him to the right, the very front of that ship might be on a rock. And you could probably prevent him from shooting at all and then force him to move through the rock again next turn, uh, which is really going to hamper his ability to get back in the fight. But instead, Asajj is going to choose to uh, just... Looks like it was, that was just a focus... Uh, either a focus or an evade. Let me confirm here. Um, the uh, chat, you're saying the ability doesn't work if the turret is to the side. Um, that is true. Thank you. I'm, I'm still thinking 1.0. You're correct. The new shadow caster, it has to be in the turret and front arc. So thank you for that. So that was, that is not an option. So, Good call then on Brandon. Yeah, both arcs have to be forward tractor. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Uh, that's the shadow caster title. Uh, so Brandon said choosing to just point his arc forward there and uh, look to take a very punishing shot either on uh, Jess or on Rose. Um, Poe moving and uh, kind of boosting and barrel rolling to get around this clusterfuck that's forming here in the center. And he will, by doing so, get a nice uh, range one shot on Asajj. Um, did Poe close his... Yes, he did close his S-foils in, in order to enable that. Uh, or not? Okay, he did not. So he's rolling four dice. Um, he doesn't have any mods, though. It doesn't look like, unless he took a, a target lock when I wasn't looking. Um, so he's just got one hit out maneuver. No, he, t he has a target lock. Okay. This, uh, this angle is a little bit harder to see things at. Uh, that's all right, but that's not the result you really want to start hammering damage through. Um, that is a blank though. So, you know, oh, and there's Brandon spending that evade he took earlier. Very aware that Asajj was probably going to get hit, uh, quite a bit this turn. Uh, taking just one shield, and that's not too bad. You wonder if he was he's going to maul to get a force back. He's probably thinking about it. You know, make sure that he has enough force for his offensive shot here, and then to defend later... But in the meantime, while he decides, and yeah, he's going to go ahead and maul. So he's going to pop his force back up to three in return for a stress, and I think that's the right call. So let's talk about, if you're Asajj, who are you shooting? Neither Jess nor Rose are fabulous targets. Um, Rose will have a reroll, uh, and Jess will have two rerolls. I think... The pr better decision here is is actually like for maybe the first time in in history, 
to shoot Rose. Uh, Jess will have two rerolls and looks to be just barely at range two. Rose will only have one, and if you can push even two damage through on Rose, that's half, and that's points on the board. And uh, yeah, he's choosing to do that. He's going to pop four dice in Rose's direction and, and see what he can do. Uh, no focus token for Rose, but um, we'll have a reroll. Uh, I can't quite see one of those results. Uh, it looks like three hits, so he's going to spend two force to do it. Ooh, that's real solid. Doesn't even need a reroll. And Rose is going to lose a shield, but that's it. Um, yeah, you could, you could... The thing about it, though, is if you tractor Rose forward, I don't know that Paylob is going to get a shot. And I think you really want Paylob to get a shot at Rose here. Um, so I think you... Yeah, I think you tractor Rose, and you just keep Rose right in front of Paylob to... to see if Paylob can just take Rose off the board here. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is I, I think at this point, uh, Ro Rose did, you know, did move well, but Rose doesn't have crack shot uh, bullseye on Paylob, right? So uh, is a risk to Paylob, but isn't the, the largest risk in history. Uh, range one shot with only one reroll, and uh, and that's the only shot. But Brandon gonna choose to do it, moving Rose forward to deny Rose any shots whatsoever, and uh, instead just choose to uh, shoot Paylob into into Poe. Um, we'll see. We'll see if that if that works out. Um, and it's Paylob's turn. Uh, so that's going to be a range one shot on the Poe. And there is no reason right now that uh, Brandon can't be a little bit more free with his tokens because uh, there's nobody else shooting Paylob. So he's got four dice. And, oh, that is a very punishing... Yeah, spend that focus there, Brandon. Uh, three hits and a crit into Poe. Poe has no mods. That's going to be all of his shields right in one go. Uh, one more damage on Poe will get him to half, uh, but uh, Charles very lucky that Leighton doesn't quite have arc to to push it through. So that's going to be a a shot up Jess uh, range two, no crits though. So the auto blaster doesn't really come into play, and uh, that's just going to be evaded by Jess. Um, but. Yeah, and Rose having no sh no shot. So that was probably the right call. So good call there, chat. Uh, that was probably the right call. I, I really thought that Rose might still have a shot on the Saj, but uh, Brandon very correctly predicting that that was not going to happen. Um, two crits coming through on this roll from the Talon Rolling Red Squad veteran, and that's pretty good, actually, if you're Brandon, because, yeah, you, there you go. You only need to roll one paint to prevent damage there. Uh, you take a shield, but you don't... Take a crit, except it's crack shot. And oh no, that crack shot coming in to really punish Brandon there. And that's a structural damage coming through on Asajj. And that is not what Asajj wants to see. Ooh, that is gonna, that is gonna hurt. Um, Jess still needs to roll two. Uh, oh, that looks like just barely range two. Uh, but Jess will have two rerolls, it looks like. One from, uh, one from Poe, one from Rose. Uh, so this could be, ooh, that's not a good start. Um, Charles getting those two rerolls, trying to make something happen with this attack. Uh, one crit. Uh, Brandon down to one evade on Asajj, really hoping to roll something, and he does. He manages to avoid any further damage with Asajj. That's really good. This could have been a very, very difficult turn for Asajj. Um, and instead, uh, I think you know Brandon makes it away with uh, kind of what he wanted. Uh, Charles's ships are all over the place, um, and 
Brandon's in a very good spot to uh, start flying away here. In fact, I think um, I think almost every one of Charles's ships is stressed here, uh, and uh, Brandon's ships just just aren't. Um, Layton, you know, or they are, but they're they're pointed in the right directions here. Uh, the only ship that you can really expect to be in a good position for a shot here from Charles is that Red Squad veteran, and there's just about no move he can do that isn't going to bump. Um, actually, I is every ship on the board stressed? I think every single ship in the game is stressed right now. Uh, from abilities and K turns. And Asajj mauled for stress, and Asajj handed Jess a stress using her ability. Paylob did the... Yeah, every single ship on the board is stressed. Um, right, so there. Let, let's, the thing is, though, that uh, Brandon's in a good position to move anyway. Layton's pointed in the right direction, can blue and not bump. Layton's in a fantastic position. Um Paylob is in a little bit of a wonkier position here. But uh, I'm looking at the dial here. Uh, one's, one, two, three straight, and one banks are blue. <coughs> I wonder if that one bank to the left there, I think that that doesn't bump you, and it puts you in a really good position to restrict Poe and still threaten literally everybody else on the board. So you can one bank with Paylob there, focus and rotate your arc to the left. And uh, yeah, chat, I I think I was trying to decide if I thought uh, that that 5K out of Asajj would fit with that rock. Asajj is stressed, but uh, has a one-use contraband cybernetics that allows Asajj to, to do red maneuvers and perform actions even while she's stressed. Um. I think for sure, Asajj just doesn't want a three bank to the right. <laughs> um, I could see a 5K out of Asajj, but I think it's more likely we see a three bank to the left or a three hard turn to the left, depending on what Leighton does. Um, but I think a three bank to the left is, is probably the best bet to get you out of pretty much every arc that Charles has to offer here. Uh, you can point your arc to the rear, continue stressing folks so that they have an even harder time coming around, and you prevent Asajj from getting shot a lot. Um, certainly with uh, structural damage, Asajj really needs to not take concentrated fire from these T-70s because uh, she will fold very, very quickly. And I think also, you know, I think Brandon is starting to accomplish what he wants here. Um, but there is nine minutes left in this game. Uh, and it feels like it just got started, but it didn't. So let's talk points and win conditions. Uh, Asajj is down uh, to the point where I think she needs two more damage. No. She's taken three damage, so she need yeah she needs two more damage to get to half. It is going to be pretty difficult, but not impossible for Brandon to just skirt Asajj out of this uh, without taking two damage. Uh, but certainly Charles has to be worrying about that because once Asajj gets away, I don't know if Charles is going to be able to catch her. Um, but let's assume that uh, you take Asajj down to half. That's forty five points. Uh, neither player has any points on the board, but Asajj is two points away from 45. The Red Squadron is two points away from 22. Rose is one point away from half, and Poe is one point away from half. Uh, both players definitely skirting around uh, having some ships in ha at half, but that's also indicative of, of how well both of these players have been playing this game because... Neither of them is allowing the other to really concentrate fire on any one ship. Both of them moving in and out of combat, forcing their, their opponents to split fire if they want to get shots at all. Uh, and that's been, that's been very effective for both players here. 
Um, but the fact that Paylob still has tokens and has not taken any damage is increasingly problematic for Charles because his chance to do that is slipping away very, very rapidly. And uh, both of these players are excellent players, but neither of these players is, is uh, the... F I'm trying to say this in a way. <laughs> both of these players have been known to take their time when thinking through these critical turns. Uh, neither just slap dials down. And, and I don't want that to sound bad because, I mean, frankly, the fact that they do that is, is one of the reasons why, you know, these are our semi, you know, two of our semifinalists. They, they think their maneuvers through and they think them through uh, as deeply as they can. But that means that we've probably got three, maybe four turns, maybe four turns to go. Um, and I think right now this is, this is Brandon's got the edge in this game, but that doesn't mean it's over. Uh, certainly, uh, Paylob looks like he's in a very good spot and he is in a very good spot, but anytime Paylob is at range one of these three primary attack ships, he is at risk of losing that stealth device, um, and, and that's just a, that's just a fact of life with that three agility. Um, yeah, Leighton just coming in very slow, but again, why the hell not? You're in a perfect position. Don't mess with anything. Uh, banking around and focusing to lose that stress and we'll get a flanking shot on somebody. Uh, Paylob doing that one bank I talked about. Again, that, that was the only maneuver he could do that would clear his stress and allow him... So he's going to focus up. He should have two focuses, and then he's going to link to point, exactly, link to point his arc to the left, and that's the best decision that Brandon can make there. Um, and, and so increasingly, Brandon is, is having very, almost very easy decisions here. Um, uh, limited ideal moves, and it, it's, it's once again up to Charles to kind of outmaneuver Brandon, uh, and you don't really want to be in that position just because you don't want the weight of making tricky maneuvers to be on you but but sometimes you just find yourself in that position um uh just doing that one bank and clearing stress bumping into rose uh probably was hoping to vie for a shot on uh Pela, but i don't quite think she got it um rose too hard turning instead of clearing that stress and I wonder if Rose is anticipating a 5K here with Contraband. Um, certainly that would put Rose in a very good position to still take a shot, um, but not modded and uh, without any rerolls. So that, that would be a problem. Hey, there it is. There's that three bank. I'm going to feel good about my predictions tonight. Um, yeah, Asajj doing a three bank, that puts her in a perfect position to get out of every single shot that Charles has to offer here and uh, still be in a good position to rotate her arc and, and take a pot shot out the rear. Um, you know, you could point it to the left if you think the Poe is going to bump. Uh, but I think pointing it to the rear is uh, going to get you the most uh, shot options. And yeah, he's doing exactly that. Um, Asajj, I think you're going to find it is, is probably likely to just pretty much run away for the rest of this game. Uh, and Poe just bumping into, into Paylob. I, I figured that that was not going to happen, but that's not actually too bad for Poe. Um, I don't think he's in Leighton's arc. He bumped into Paylob and he's not in Asajj's arc. So Poe going to get away without getting shot this turn. And, and that's actually pretty important here because one more damage onto Poe is, could make uh, those points start adding up in Brandon's favor very quickly. Um, that said, this is not a good turn for Charles. Uh, three of Charles's four ships have absolutely no shots whatsoever. Um, and the one of his, the one ship that he does have a shot with is completely unmodded and not at range one. Whereas Brandon has good shots with every single one of his ships. And, and so this is, this is where I was talking about earlier. Charles, really, the, the way that you fly in formation against 
Brandon's list, Charles had really two turns to make something happen. The first turn where he was taking pot shots at range two and three, and the next turn where he was closing to range one. After that, if he didn't do enough damage to make it so that he was really getting points, he was going to find himself having an increasingly difficult time getting any kind of opportunity to pile damage through onto Brandon. Uh, and we're seeing that right now. Asajj is going to take a range two into that uh, red squad veteran. Um, it's just going to be two dice, but you have mods and the opponent doesn't. And if you can do two damage to that ship, uh, it's down to half. Uh, so that's the right call, not only because it's close to half, but also because uh, Paylob pointed his arc to the left. So Paylob's going to be able to shoot the red squad veteran too. Um, Brandon may be thinking for a second about shooting Rose instead at range three. That would have also been a very, very good shot. But I think there's more points available to that in that red squad veteran. So I think you probably want to shoot him. Uh, but uh, hey, uh, red squad veteran getting that double natty um, doesn't need mods at all uh, and is going to uh, skip away with no damage, at least until uh, Paylob takes a shot. Um, it, I'm interested to see who Leighton decides to shoot here. Um, Leighton has what looks like is probably an auto blaster bullseye shot to Jess. Uh, auto blaster bullseye marksmanship the the whole the whole stack of everything that that ship does um, and does not have uh, that bullseye to uh, to Rose. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and shoot Jess. Um, you could have seen him decide to shoot Rose and then just pray that you roll a crit. Uh, so he's going to spend a focus, and that's going to become two crits. Both of those are going to be unblockable, I believe. It's not just one, right? It's like all crits are unblockable, uh, I think is how it is with auto blasters when you're out of arc. So, yeah, um, solid roll there. It didn't even matter what just rolled. That was just going to be two shields no matter what. And now Jess, too, is... is uh, ooh, is that... Is that arc? Is that range one, Paylob getting a shot on Jess? I think it is. And that... I don't think Brandon thought he could get that shot. And I think that's going to make him take a second and, and reconsider his target priority here. Uh, I, I think Paylob was, was all in on shooting the Red Squad veteran, but after the success of that shot against Jess and having a range one shot, uh, yeah, he's going to take that range one against Jess. Um, see what he can make happen there. And that's going to be three hits if he spends that focus, and he's definitely doing it. Um, he still has another one if he needs it, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jess rolling for defense, getting nothing, but uh, should still have her ability. And she'll probably have enough ships at range one that she can just, yeah, do a full reroll. Oh, but that's still enough damage to get Jess to half, and that's not good at all for Charles. And there is our first... Uh, Da, da, da. That's not. There we go. There's our first points on the board, and they are in Brandon's favor. Just going down to half with a pretty decent set of shots there. Uh, and oh, it just keeps getting worse. Uh, I mean, we knew this from last time, but the, seeing how close Paylob is to range one there is is so, so difficult. Um, but holy cow, that is a good roll. Uh, that Red Squad veteran has needed no mods whatsoever, and there goes the stealth device on Paylob. That could change things. Paylob still 
two damage away from half, but a little bit, you know, you could actually hurt him a little bit now. And this is this is just kind of what I was talking about earlier. Paylob, it was in a very good position, but anytime Paylob is just in front of these three attack dice ships, you are risking that they just suddenly roll really well, even if they don't have any mods, and uh, and your stealth device can go poof just like that, and and that's that's what we saw happen. Uh, so yeah, Paylob in a bit of a pickle. Uh, no stealth device, two damage away from half. And uh, also, out of tokens, spent the last of his focus tokens to put Jess at half and and, uh, and get away with just one shield. That, that roll, we talk about dice not mattering, but sometimes dice do come through when you need them to give you an advantage or a chance that you didn't have before. And that's exactly what just happened here. Um... You know, Charles managing to take that completely unmodded shot, busting through the stealth device, and uh, getting that now vulnerable Paylob does change this game a little bit. Brandon's up on points for now, but if you can manage to have Paylob, that's a, a solid 38 points coming your direction. And that's more than Brandon has right now. Um, and if you can manage to have Paylob and have Asajj, both of whom are uniquely vulnerable right now because both of them are now down in agility from when this game started, uh, we could see this game turn around. The, the, this game ha now has, what, 38 plus 45. Brand Charles now has 80 plus points in decent reach. He just needs one more good shot on Paylob and one more good shot on Asajj. Two damage to either of them nets you half points. So Brandon, far from thinking he has this in the bag, has got to be sweating a little bit right now. Uh, all of a sudden, it's turned around and, and the, game, the game state has changed. Let's also note, time is out. This is the Corona Cup, so... Uh, after time ends, you play two more full rounds, and that's then the end of the game. So this, there are two rounds left in this game. Charles has to have or kill Paylob or have Asajj. I don't know that you're going to get to kill Asajj. Um, but if you can have Asajj before she gets away, that's, that's really great for you. And if you can manage to have or kill Paylob, you are in a solid position to actually win this game. And uh, Brandon now has to be thinking, well, crap, uh, I can't just fly away and take pot shots. I actually might have to turn in and engage here. Uh, is is got to be moving his little finger his on the calculator. Um, Jess at half. You've already got points from Jess. Poe one away from half. And let's let's say this: Poe and Paylob are the exact same points. So if Brandon loses half on Paylob, but takes half on Poe in return, it all evens out. So Charles is going to have to be pretty squirrely with how he flies Poe here, especially with Leighton lurking in the background and always a risk of, of Leighton rolling that natural crit or getting you in marksmanship and, and just taking you to half with absolutely no say. Um, but all of, all of Charles' ships are close to half. The Red Squad expert, two away, and, and Brandon has to be pretty pissed at that ship in particular right now. Um, Rose won away and Poe won away. So this is a very, very close game, and this could swing wildly in either direction depending on how these players move and, and how these players shoot. Something that, that did go a little bit unnoticed uh, last turn is that while Jess did a blue maneuver, Asajj spent a force using her rear arc to stress Jess once again. So Jess coming into this turn stressed again. Rose coming into this turn stressed still because of that uh, white uh, two maneuver that I don't... Uh, Rose didn't get shot, but I don't, 
I don't think she really helped. I think she would have preferred to have done a, a blue here and then K-turn and come back in. But where Rose is right now is in a good position to kind of too hard turn again to the left and try to get Asajj in arc to maybe put some damage through. But she won't have any friendlies in arc and she won't have any focus tokens. So it's not a great position, but as we've seen, sometimes unmodified dice do come through for you. And even if it's not ideal, all players know that you just you have to keep taking chances to maximize your chance of winning until the game ends. Um, so Jess in a bit of a, an interesting position. But I wouldn't be surprised to see her just too hard turn to the right, keep that stress, and try to get arc on Paylob. Uh, one of the many benefits of Charles's list here is that he doesn't necessarily need to take actions with all of his ships in order to uh, have mods. Um, Paylob trying to get the fuck on out of there, um, moving, focusing, and rotating, uh, but he he's in a pickle. There's, there's just no denying it. That Red Squad veteran is going to be coming in on him, uh, and... Leighton moving quicker than I expected. I'm not sure what Brandon is looking to get out of that. There's that too hard turn from Rose again. You just, when in doubt, just move so you can take shots. And now Rose is in a decent position to, to move next turn and, and, and clear something. And there's not a lot of moves that Asajj can do here that will not uh, enable a shot from Rose. Yeah, there's a... There's a range one shot from a from a very swanky red squad expert uh, into Paylob, and uh, that that Paylob's got to be sweating. But okay, Brandon correctly predicting a one straight from Jess, and I was really expecting a uh, a two hard turn to keep Arc on Paylob, and and that's not what Charles chose. He chose the one straight, and Brandon reading that correctly, and uh, and getting the block on Jess, which is. Um, could end up being a, a very big deal here. Um, Asajj moving uh, away from Rose, which is uh, something that I'm sure uh, Brandon is happy that he chose that particular direction. But I, I think that that was a, a clear decision there because the the too hard turn from Rose was pretty pretty telegraphed. Um, Asajj has to consider though. Uh, you could your arc is pointed to the back. You could rotate your arc to the left. Or you can evade. Yeah, and he's going to choose to evade and just try desperately to not go down to half on Asajj if he can help it. Um, and his arc is pointed to the back, so he'll still be able to shoot... Uh, he'll still be able to shoot Rose. And that Leighton move looking better by the minute because he blocked both Jess and Poe with that. Yeah, I was expecting Jess to turn as well. Um, but uh, I, I will I will not quibble with Brandon's uh, decision there because uh, he, he's just disrupting Charles's list every which way there with that move. Even if Leighton doesn't manage a shot, that that might be ideal. But I really did think that Leighton was going to go a little bit of a slower maneuver and try to take a pot shot up uh, up Poe's flank or up the Red Squad expert's flank. Um. Uh, I don't quite know if Leighton will actually have a shot on the Red Squad Expert. If he does, that will just be the icing on the cake. But as it is, this is this is still going very well for Brandon, except for that range one modded shot coming into Paylob from that Red Squadron Expert. And that is probably going to hurt no matter how, how you, you try to spin it. Um... So there's a couple very important things here. Um, in fact, every shot here has the capability to swing this game. Rose, not capable of having a Saj, but capable of putting a Saj towards one hit away and almost guaranteeing it. A Saj, if a, a, completely capable of having Rose. If a Saj puts even one damage through on Rose, that's half. And Rose has no mods. Uh, hit, hit, that is pretty likely to do it. 
And that is absolutely going to do it. There is half on Rose, and that is a win for Brandon in this combat right now. Rose not worth a lot of points, but, but everything matters here. Um, that puts it over what, for example, if Paylob gets halved, that's no longer enough for Charles to be taking a win here. Leighton, yeah, is not going to have arc, but I think did enough with that move um, to maybe make it worthwhile. Um, Paylob here is, and and this is this is why Paylob now has a range one shot at Poe, and if he doesn't take that shot, I will be flabbergasted. Uh, that's not great, but he can spend a focus. He's not going to do it. Oh. I don't know about that decision. Um, Brandon choosing not to spend his focus on the rerolls to push that one more damage through onto Poe and uh, unfortunately getting no damage for it. Um, I, I, I think... Yeah, we'll we'll see how it we'll see how it turns out. Brand, Brandon being a, a much more conservative player for sure. Um, Rose one hit, but uh, even with structural damage, it's guaranteed Asajj takes no damage, even if she didn't roll an evade, which she did, because of that evade token she took. Um, um, but uh, Rose had not used crack shot, and I had not noticed that that was in bullseye. So actually, Rose pushing one more damage through. Uh, Charles out of crack shots now. Okay, here here's the here's the big thing. Uh, we've got a range one modded shot coming through. We saw what happened last time with a range two unmodded shot. Um, he does have a target lock. He will spend it. He's got two hits on the board already in a perfectly average roll. Um, oh, and that is not looking good for Paylob. Uh, four hits coming in. Uh, one of eight, he'll probably spend his focus to roll that again. And yeah, okay. The, so I, I know hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, Paylob going down to just one health, and he absolutely needed to spend the focus to try and push damage through on Poe. Um. And I think doing that would have netted him the game. Not doing that, I think, has, has unfortunately um, exposed him to uh, a very point, a very uh, tight points match here. Uh, two point difference heading into the final round of this game. Brandon, 40 points in the lead. Charles at 38. And holy shit, it is close. Um, let's. These players are going to be taking their time, so let's do the same. I think I have all of the hull and shield totals up to date, so let's talk about this. <laughs> Brandon's ships, both of them are exactly one damage away. <laughs> from giving up some points. Paylob, one damage away from death. Asajj, one damage away from half. And Leighton's just, you know, doing Leighton things, that's fine. Um, Charles, uh, Poe, one damage away from half. Red Squadron Expert, two damage away from half. Um, I, I honestly... This this might be the closest game we've I've ever commentated because I don't know who has the advantage here. You have to And all of the maneuvers are so jumbled up. So let let's take this one one ship at a time. Asajj is in a good position to just run the fuck away. Um, I think if I don't see a 5k out of Asajj, cybernetic 5k out of Asajj into an evade, I will be flabbergasted. Um, you know, if, if Brandon can do anything right here, it's just put both Asajj and Paylob in kind of the same place 
and try and force Charles to only be able to shoot one or the other, but not both. Um, Rose in a very good position to just kind of two bank and focus and try to pop a shot. I don't know that she's going to be able to. Brandon can move so quick that she'll probably be left in the dust, um, which is unfortunate for, for Charles, but uh, Rose probably not at risk of, of getting killed here. We'll probably just see a bank and a focus and a prayer. Um, Layton in a bit of a weird spot. Do can't really turn around. Um, doesn't have a talon, doesn't have any sloops. Uh, I could see just a, a hard turn to the right. You know you're going to bump probably, but in doing so, um, you might still be able to take an unmodded shot up the back of that Red Squadron expert. Uh, you could also just do a slow bank to the left and try to catch Poe or Jess as they turn around. Um, that might be the better option here. Uh, Poe in a in a bad. Uh, there, there's just there's no. Poe is in an interesting spot. On the one hand, Poe is there's like zero chance that Poe gets to take any shots this turn. I mean, it's just not going to happen. But if Poe can run away and not give up that last health of his, that's probably ideal for him. Uh, you think two turn, uh, Chad, are you saying two turn right for Poe or for Layton? Because I don't think two turn right for Poe. I think three turn left for Poe is ideal. Uh, for Layton, yeah, two turn right. Yeah, I think I think so. Does, this, does the uh, Interceptor have a, a three hard turn? Um, it does not. So a two hard turn is probably ideal. Yeah, I agree with you there, chat. Um, Poe, probably a three hard turn to the left, uh, just get the hell out of Dodge and prevent you from just losing 38 points. Um, and the Red Squadron Expert, uh, completely capable of just one straighting or two straighting. Uh, probably just a one straight, guarantee that you get that shot. So here's the deal. Um, Charles is in a really good spot to protect all of his points. Brandon, just not in a good spot at all to take points this turn. Um, and the points that they are looking at trading here, maybe, uh, Paylob loot dying and giving up 38 points and Red Squad veteran going down to half and losing 22 points are not at all equivalent. If Paylob and the Red Squad expert do nothing but shoot each other, Paylob dies, Red Squad expert goes down to half, Charles wins this game. Brandon needs to figure out some way to pull a good shot out of his hat here and do something more than just take Red Squad Expert down to half. Um, he needs to do that. He needs to do that and kill Rose? Maybe. The more I talk about this, the more I don't see how Brandon wins this game. It's, it's a tangle, but I just don't see how Brandon can manage to set up the kinds of shots that he needs to set up to take the win. Um, he might need to go slower than he would prefer with Asajj in order to take shots out the side to try and make something happen. But if he just runs away with Asajj and takes no shots, I don't see how he wins this game. Um, there's the too hard turn with Leighton. Um, so, you know, let's all, let's all pat ourselves on our collective backs chat for that. Um, and Paylob moving uh, one bank, he'll focus or debris gambit, but... Um, I'm expecting a focus just because it's so much more versatile. Um, and he doesn't have any at the moment. And that's also a good because that will force whoever comes up to take a shot at 
Paylob to get shot by Leighton. And uh, ironically, now it's it's Brandon that's in the position of having to pray for uh, pray for dice to come through for him. Um, but no, Paylob's going to boost and and kind of hope that he uh, just doesn't get shot at all here. And that that might be. We'll see how aggressive Charles moved. But oh boy, that that is a gamble. That one health. No mod Paylob, no stealth device Paylob, just hanging out there, praying that nobody points themselves at him. Uh, but now it's it's Charles's turn to move, and we'll see what he does. Um, order might be important here. I don't really know. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. If that boost wins him the game, Brandon has to, his heart has to be being so quick right now. If that boost wins him the game, that is going to be incredible. Um, it looks like we're probably going to be starting with the Red Squadron Expert, which is great because, uh, and he's flipping it. He's flipping the S-foils. He, yeah, he did a one straight, and I don't know that he can get Ark. He did a one straight, and I think a bar any barrel roll he does hits that rock. And he's just, he's going to focus, and he has to try it. Okay, that what a clutch move for Brandon, doing that boost with Paylob. And uh, making Red Squad Expert, the ship that was unequivocally going to just murder the shit out of Paylob, uh commit to Asajj instead and try to make something happen there. Rose moving as quick as she can, uh, and she's going to stress again to jam Asajj and, you know, really try to make something happen. Um, and and uh, that's not good news for Brandon because that means he will not get the evade that he's he, he counts on to, to try not to take any damage here. Um, so... Brandon still not in a good place. Let let's, I mean let's let's not pretend that he's he won that game with that with that clutch move there. He needs more than that. Um, Leighton, Leighton got a yeah, red boost for the win for the first time in X Wing history. Uh, Leighton may have gotten out of the Red Squadron expert's arc, and I don't think is in Jess's arc or for range. Uh, yeah, there's that 5K cybernetics. Uh, you would take an evade, but you have the jam, so uh, Charles has essentially denied that evade, which could be crucial here. Um, but uh, Charles still has a shot on Asajj here. Uh, Poe probably won't get a shot. Jess probably won't get a shot. Rose probably won't get a shot. This entire game is going to come down to a... Closed S foil shot on Asajj through debris. And I kind of can't believe that, that it's coming down so close to the wire here. Layton's not going to be able to shoot anybody. I mean, that's just, you know, the, he slipped out of arc there. So Layton's not shooting. Uh, Jess isn't shooting. Uh, Poe, I mean, we, we haven't seen Poe move yet, but Poe's almost certainly not going to shoot anybody worthwhile. Um, although I'm willing to be surprised. Having some, some issues with the, with the dial there. Yeah, there's that three hard turn for Poe. Um, yeah, that, that, and that was just the correct move um, for, for Charles. He needed to protect Poe's points and, and he's done that. And there's no reason to do anything else. Um, yeah, you, you barrel roll, but it, again, it doesn't matter. You're out of arc anyway. You can you can just sit still and do a little jig if you want to. Poe's out of the game. Rose is out of the game. Jess is out of the game, assuming that I can actually like measure range properly and she doesn't have a, a, a crazy game-winning pot shot at Paylob. Um, Leighton out of the game. This entire game just came down to these three ships, Asajj, Paylob, and the Red Squadron Expert. Um, but in a way, it, it doesn't matter what Asajj and Paylob managed to do to this Red Squadron expert. Um, unless they managed to just kill it outright, which is pretty unlikely. 
Um, because even a half on the Red Squadron Expert is not enough for half on Asajj. Um, I mean, if they manage to kill this thing, then that actually just puts the... In, in fact, the Red Squadron Expert is exactly half the points of Asajj. <laughs> so even if you kill, take it from health to kill here, uh, you just reset the board to exactly what it was. But that would still make Brandon win. Um, I just don't think it's likely that Brandon manages to kill the Red Squadron Expert here. Uh, so really, this entire game now has come down to Red Squadron Expert taking a focused shot on Asajj. Uh, <laughs> uh, Asajj, though, could make something happen if she manages to hit him. Oh, it got the focus got stolen. Thank you. Oh, no. Good call. Thank you, chat, for pointing that out. The The focus got stolen. Um, ooh, this is a decision for Brandon. He's spending his force. I guess that makes sense. You, you're not rolling that many, that many green dice. And, oh, my God, that's three damage coming through on this Red Squadron expert. And uh, I may need to eat some of my words here. Now only two away from dead... Does Palob have Ark on him? More importantly, where is Brandon going to put him with that tractor? If he barrel rolls him right back where he came from, that T-70... may not get a shot on Asajj at all, and this game may just be over right now. Chat saying that dice don't matter. I'm not sure that that's true yet, but I, I I do think it's extremely likely that if Brandon barrel rolls this T70 to the left and forward, that that's just game. The that the T70 will not be able to get a shot on Paylob or on Asajj, and and that will end Charles's ability to win this game. And oh my. Yeah, and Leighton will have a shot too and, and may just be able to take the red squad out of this game. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and barrel roll him and that's the right call. Palob can get a shot. Leighton can get a shot. The red squad expert will probably not get a shot. Um, but certainly, if Brandon does manage to kill the red squad expert here, that's just game. And we'll find out very quickly because Brandon's two PS3s get to shoot first. Yeah, Leighton with the auto blaster. I mean, he's got no mods, and it's not in, in Bullseye, but it's still going to be a three dice unblockable crits. So this could really make something happen. This is a close game. Um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, this has been a hell of a game to watch, and there's it's no surprise that these players are semifinalists. Um, they're, they're really just giving each other absolutely no room to try to squeak through here but that shot from Asajj really really changed things up um and it didn't it, it was not guaranteed uh Asajj didn't have a target lock didn't have any way to deal with blanks and and that t70 was at range three through a rock but uh a little bit taking revenge for for the red squadron experts uh natty destruction of the stealth device earlier so um i think they've been pretty even um so james this is actually the last turn so um the there's not going to be any there's not going to be any more ability to to turn into paylob for the shot next turn um but you could, yeah, you, you could do the 90 degree rotate with, uh, with tractor. I wonder, if, I, I wonder if he's even thinking about that though. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen anybody do it. Uh, for those wondering, um, they, they did a little bit of like, uh, somewhat of a nerf to tractor beam in that when you get tractored, he's doing it. Uh, he, you can take a stress after you get tractored to rotate 90 degrees in a given direction. Yeah, and the stress doesn't matter. Um, you don't get the bullseye, and you don't have a mod. Um, 
but we have a game again. Yeah, and who does who cares about the stress? It 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 doesn't matter. Um, so once again, we're back to having a game. Um, Paylob, if Paylob and Layton, oh no no no, oh Paylob does not have a shot. I was going to say you want to shoot Layton first to decide if you want to be spending your focus. Um, because if you manage to kill if you manage to kill that ship, it wouldn't matter if Paylob died or not. But uh. Layton is going to have a shot, and Paylob doesn't. Um, but oh my god, look at those dice. Three hits coming in at that. And that's going to be enough to kill the Red Squadron veteran. After all of that, Layton going crazy and, uh, and killing that Red Squad vet. And that will secure the game for Brandon in what must be the twistiest last turn I think I've ever commentated. Uh, and it's just it, at this point, it just does not matter what what Charles does here with this red squad v expert. He's got he's got a primary attack. He's rolling two hits. Uh, Paylob, you know, probably not going to survive this. I, I oh my god, he rolls. <laughs> oh, no. Paylob squeaking away from another eliminations match. With exactly one health left, both Kevin and Charles taking Paylob down to one. Oh my God! No, we hold on. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Jess has a shot. Jess coming f from that that terrible position to try to make Charles a happier person here. Um, not sure why he's rolling four dice. Um, but I don't think either of these players are really worried about it at this point. And uh, wait, 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 wait. He can spend he can spend that focus for those rerolls. Oh, she's shooting Layton. Oh, okay, I okay. I really thought. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he he gets half on Layton. Um. Uh, not enough to not enough to to really uh, close. Even a dead Layton wouldn't have been enough to close the points gap. But I really thought he was going to go for Paylob to try to uh, you know say, all right, I lost this game, but God damn it, I'm going to be the first person in this entire tournament to kill Paylob. Uh, and uh, that that is not that is just not going to happen. Although I do hear that actually Paylob died in the Idea Squad tournament that Brandon's playing, uh, gunned down by an. Uh, <laughs> an identical Paylob Asajj interceptor list that uh, spawned from seeing Brandon do so well with this. So, uh, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You live by the Paylob and you die by him. Uh, let me jump into the game here and get some of these players' thoughts. I'm going to load up Discord and seeing if I can uh, get some of their thoughts on this game. If you have any questions for the players, put them in chat. I think. Hey. hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me. I can hear cool. you in the game too. What is uh, what does Mark think the score was? Uh, I have the score at Brandon eighty five, Charles fifty five. There you go. That's what we have too. Okay. Cool. That checks out. That was a that was a hell of a game, guys. Uh, we were we were all hanging out over here in the common uh, in the comments and and just like trying to figure out who had the advantage at every given moment, and it just kept flipping.
It did. Yeah, I I feel like I didn't want to joust him. He wanted to joust me. I, we were talking about that early on. I feel like, like on paper, he has the the better joust possibility. But there's so much bad or so much stuff I can do to undermine him. And it kind of showed because he ended up jousting. Uh, Paylob ended up jousting three ships anyway and took no damage. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were we were kind of talking at the start about, you know your ability to, you know, move ships around and steal focus tokens and kind of make Charles take an unideal approach. Um, but yeah, that first round of shooting where Paylob just got, got to scoot away with his tokens completely intact was, was difficult. Yeah. And I didn't do a whole lot for it. I mean, I did, I did what two shields to, yeah, you did, yeah, to you did two shields. Yeah. I mean, on an X-wing, that's or on a T seventy, that's whatever. But to, <laughs> but to do two shields and take nothing in return is is a good exchange. Sure. Um, but Charles did a good job of avoiding. I mean, obviously, uh, avoiding the paylob is the easy one, you know, because you just don't focus. Um, well, until the last it's, turn. it's it's detrimental until the last turn. You gave me that, uh, which was really <laughs> nice of you, and I appreciate it. Uh, but I mean. <laughs> Through the you know through the the meat of the game when it mattered you you didn't give in and, and take a focus um, so you know that it undermines your efforts but you you know that's that's the easy part you just didn't do that and just managed to try to power through without it but um, avoiding all of the uh, avoiding the rock hopping uh, was uh, really helpful to you because one of the first things I looked at with with your list it was okay when when Poe comes into brawl, my plan is to put him on a rocket i seven, right? But I was never really able to do that because the one turn I thought about it, I was actually more interested in um instead of shooting over the shooting straight over the rocks which i could have done and i thought about mm-hmm. i did the two bank in thinking oh i'll i'll just catch the red squadron when he does the 4k and i'll put him on a rock instead and it's not perfect but at least that hopefully gets me points keeps him out of the fight for a couple of turns that kind of thing mm-hmm. um and that ended up being a mistake honestly i should have just gone straight because if i had gone straight um i could have uh i could have blocked poe cuz i knew poe was going to do hard too so if I had gunned the engines and shot over that rock, I could have placed myself to uh, to where Poe couldn't boost. I was wondering if you were going to go over the rock when you're down. Yeah, there. and I and I thought about it, and that probably would have been the better move because I could have made it to where you didn't bump me, but were unable to boost, so that right. then you could have gotten bullseye auto blastered out of arc and or ended up on the rock. At, That's at why arc. I took the path I did with Poe. Uh, yeah. where I went around this this rock where Asajj is up there. Because if you did go over the rock, you wouldn't be at range one of Poe and some crazy shot do a ton of damage. Yeah, well, I, and I was talking, I'm talking about that turn that I, so I did that three hard and I was yes. up here. Yes. And then the next turn I did the two bank. I could have done like a three or a four straight and just planted myself right here. Sure. For that turn that you hard turned in. Yeah, but I can't barrel roll boost. Um, yeah, you could barrel roll boost, but if you're right there, you know, uh, you could have boot barrel roll boosted away and you would have only eaten I mean, a, a two die shot, a two die auto blaster out of arc at that point, but sure. it, still would have, it still would have threatened you. Yeah. Maybe better than, uh, the fact that I got lucky in that you only threw two damage when you pushed in for that attack. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, Cause that was, that, that was luck. Like I, I fully expected to take more damage there, right? And and that's what it that's what the difference was. I mean, it's a thirty point difference in the game. So um, if you had gotten half on, if you had killed Paylob or gotten half on Asajj, you would have. Yeah, won. if you actually just to be specific, if you hadn't rolled two Natty evades with Paylob and you rolled a blank, I win. Um, just to be very specific. Yeah, assuming I didn't, I didn't get the reroll with the focus token. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. and at this <laughs> at this point, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would have been enough. Um, and it's crazy how close it came at the end. Right. Yeah. 
No, it was crazy. I'm sure points wise, it went up and down a little bit. I mean, it was it was just um, zero for the longest time. <laughs> I know. Well, I mean, here's the thing about that. So uh, he put Asajj really far out there, which I honestly thought at the time was a mistake. Um, because, you know, he smartly had these three rocks right in front of me at the beginning of the game. So I just I took them out of the game and then made him an obstacle for him. That's what I was trying to do there. Um, well, and I kinda... it didn't pay off, though, because I was like, OK, I've got all four ships on Layton and Paylop. But it didn't pay off. Right. That, that's just the right. bottom line. But I did want to fight in space, which the middle of these rocks was big enough for me to fight in. So I was like, OK, that's fine. That's where the fight's going to be. That's better for me. You can't get evades. Um, and we'll get some bumps, but I've got I've got natural rerolls. And just right. hoping that that pays off. It's just amazing we didn't push more damage. Yeah, I I agree. And yeah, like I I did those rocks where I did, and I figured, okay, cool. He wants to he he wants to fight in the middle, and that's the right call. But it also allowed the reason I swung wide once mm -hmm. you did what once you started doing what you did was because I knew, oh well, he doesn't want those rocks in his way, which means he's gonna be less likely to want to go hard in and engage Asajj, which you and I have, and, and Mark have discussed to death. The right choice <laughs> in my list is to go after Asajj first. Yeah, sure. Right, yeah, the, the, that's just... And he was a one away was. with structural so, damage. But I just able, couldn't get there at the beginning of the game. It was a, I, was a big deal. I, I mean, if I'd done one damage to either or Asajj, that's the bottom line. But, yeah, and I, and I didn't think you were going to have that crack shot with... Um, with Rose that turn. Yes. That's why I took the evade and everything. And, and yes. I even dialed in, I, I dialed in the two heart instead of the three heart <laughs> thinking, Oh, this will be fine. And, and then it panned out that way. And I was like, man, come on. So when you took the evade and I'm thinking, does he remember he's got structural damage and Rose has crack shot left? Because I remember it, that you it literally that. won't matter. But, but I, I didn't like, think you had the bullseye. So you evaded hard. when you shouldn't have. And I focused when I shouldn't have. So yeah. fair trade. Yeah, exactly. And what I should have done that turn is instead of evade, um, you know, if I had known you had the crack shot, I would have rotated the arc to the side, ignored the shot on Rose, and tried to push another damage into Poe for the half points. Well, that, that's the other thing. I had just as natty a row with Poe as you did with with Pelop. Yeah, right there, uh, right there at the last. The Where, last I mean, you, you, guys, you guys both kind of had these like clutch dice rolls. We did. You know, the Red Squad expert rolling just, you know, natty crazy to get through Paylob's stealth device. And a couple turns, you know, Leighton rolling those natty three hits to delete the Red Squadron expert and pretty much secure it. Uh, you know, all both of you re really had, you know, really key turn. Asajj rolling fire through the rock and then the T-70 rolling nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think oh, both yeah. of you had had really Which good turns of dice when you really needed it. And I think it created a, a very back and forth kind of game. Yeah. I just pulled up the dice stats and they're very close. They're very close. It's not even worth, you know, saying his is better. Yeah. So, it's yeah. Cause you're, uh, let's see here. My reds are 2.9. Your reds were one. That's, that's basically negligible when you're, when you're on the plus side of it. And then my greens were, uh, my greens were 1.5 and your greens were 3.18. So that's pretty, that's, that's pretty good greens, but you know what? I feel like when I needed you to take damage, mm -hmm. that's when you rolled the not good greens. Yeah. There was um, some variants, right? So, right. But, you know, they were either really good or really bad. Yeah. But uh, no, it was a, it was a really good game. I don't know that everybody watching would appreciate how good it was. I, I mean, I, mean I think if you if you yeah. watch it again and you read the chat, everybody in the chat was talking about like how good a game that was and how close it was. And well, so yeah, we we actually we actually had a decently active chat in this one, and I, I think it, sh it, it should have been the, the final the game, and and we'd be virtually crowning Brandon. Uh, well, for we'll see. We'll see. He's he's got yeah. a he's got a difficult match coming up next week, but Brandon, uh, congrats moving to the finals once again in a Corona Cup. 
Thank you. And uh, Charles, congrats on getting it this far, man. I mean, this was a hell of a game, and it, it showed how good you guys both are. And, and that, like, look at how many ships are just so close, teetering away at half. And, I mean, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the mark of two players that, that know what they need to do to win. And uh, so this was a hell of a game to watch, and I appreciate you guys letting me stream it. Oh, thank you, Mark, and congrats, yeah, congrats you. Brandon. And uh, thank you. everybody else, thanks for showing up to watch. Hope you guys had fun. Um, and uh, I'll talk to you guys all later. Have a good night. You too, thank you.